Hey everyone, it's Psycho and welcome to my first content video. For some quick background for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm a professional coach for Gamers Ready, an experienced competitive player, uh, but most of you might know me from a certain shot back in 2019. Along with this video, I'm aiming to post loads of content in the coming months and hopefully it will help all of you aspiring competitive players out there. In this video, I'm aiming to show you guys the most common mistakes you're making as a last man and how to fix those issues through smart positioning, decision making and boost control. Striking the balance between delivering upfield pressure and keeping your defensive integrity is one of 3v3's hardest challenges, and depending on your personal experiences through the game, you might have adopted one of two approaches to your last man positioning for when your team has possession. A more aggressive last man would usually pressure as far forward as they can be whilst being able to scramble back to their net in time to make a save, whereas a more defensive last man usually positions more passively to deal with the worst case scenario. Now, in high level competitive, especially in ranked, uh, the more aggressive style is definitely adopted the most, as the majority of goals in ranked are scored through just persistent pressure. For when I'm playing my ranked games, I like to try and combine the benefits of both by positioning as far back as I can predict a ball to be cleared in the situation. And from that position, usually you can face forward to contest cleared balls immediately without needing to reposition or turn. And it also allows you to clear back up towards your first and second man to help create goal scoring chances. Or if you've got the boost for it, maybe even a solo play. Let's move on to some last man positioning for defense. And this is where things can get a bit more complicated. Uh, but before coming on to that, you need to understand the basics of defensive rotation in competitive Rocket League. Um, good rotation is a constant flow of support and it prioritizes the best potential opportunities. Now the job of the first man in defense is to force the opponent to lose possession, whether it's through positional pressure or just throwing a challenge. Uh, the second man in defense supports the first so that their challenge or lack of can be followed up. And finally, the last man in defense should support the worst case scenario in pretty much every situation. Now, practically the best way to keep a strong defense is to have complete option coverage. Most teams will score goals through persistent pressure, like I said earlier, but at a higher level, you'll see teams get m way more effective uh, with infield passing, backboard usage, and demo plays. Now, covering all three of these strategies is really difficult, uh, but top teams usually try and solve this by covering options. Now, positioning one player on the backboard, one in net, and another to try and disrupt opportunities is a really common high-level formation in defense. And if when you're rotating back to net, you can see an opportunity for the opponents to use the backboard, always try and make sure you've got it covered, as it's way easier to come down from the backboard than to fly up to it, especially if you've got low boost. And having two players stuck in net is a worst case scenario you never want to side with. So try and consider the ideal option coverage for when you're rotating back to a last man position. Once you've got a strong defensive rotation as a team, you can start trying to experiment with breakaway opportunities by positioning men on the wall or elsewhere in space to try and receive those clearances uh, from the keeper or from the guy on the backboard. And this is a great way of transitioning your defense to an offense with just a few touches. And it's something you often hear referred to as breakaway defense. Rocket League is best played situationally. And although there's lots of rules that can help you out, there will never be a one size fits all. A good tip is to never leave a massive gap between your second and third man if your team is holding offense. It's really common for the last man to run all the way back for back boost when the mid isn't available, but this is the worst possible idea if you want to maintain pressure. Taking combinations of the circular line of pads and the straight line of pads can help you net an easy 60 or so boost for when you're turning back upfield, and I'll show a few examples of good boost paths on screen now to achieve that. Now, let's try and imagine a situation where the opponents have managed to dribble past your second man with a flick or some close control. If as a last man you're in the middle of grabbing a back boost, your second man's pressure was essentially wasted. Even though they forced the opponent to move, they'll have enough time to regain control and try to beat you as well, and that's just a risk not worth taking. My final tip for last man positioning is to try and hold strong positions. Now, although everyone mentions momentum being really important for making difficult saves, unless you can see a shot coming, don't get sucked out of position by constantly adjusting it. Patience and discipline are probably two of the best traits for a last man to have. Now, finally, for when you're a last man, 
make sure to clear towards space and clear towards safety if your team aren't able to follow up. So nine times out of 10, the corner is the safest place to throw to. Try not to boom it off the ball and center the opponents from there. Don't clang a ball with no boost into the middle and definitely don't roll a ball up your car if you've got no boost. If this video has helped you in some way, be sure to leave some comments below and I'll be happy to answer any questions you've got. Don't be disheartened if you don't improve right away, Rocket League is all about recognizing and learning from new situations. If you wanted to keep up with my content, feel free to subscribe, I've got plenty more tutorials and montage content coming up. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.